Hello and welcome. I'm Johnny, I'm an engineer, and you want to put your lovely logo in your amazing app, but you fail. You see, your logo is an SVG, which is great. If a PNG or a JPEG are specific instructions on which pixel to paint, which color, an SVG is mathematical instructions, which makes it infinitely scalable and easy to recolor, amongst other things. But your app is a Next.js web app, which is also great. However, Next.js does not support importing SVGs as React components out of the box. It is something Create React App does immediately support, which is why you may find this snippet as you're searching for answers, but it won't work. Well, we can do it. We can import SVGs as React components in our Next.js app. All we need is to set up a couple of things. Let's go. Behind the scenes, Next.js is running Webpack to understand and transform our code. It's how it understands TypeScript and JSX, for example, or even image imports. The latest version of Next.js does understand .svg files, but it understands them as images, imports them as their own static image data object, which is not what we want. So even though we could pass the logo to next image, we don't want to. We don't want this, and the Next.js team agrees as they've explicitly overridden their type definition for SVG specifically to avoid conflicts with the SVGR Webpack plugin. And that's indeed the plugin we want to use. So let's install SVGR as a dev dependency and open up our next config.js. If you don't have this file, create it at the root of your project. We need to extend this config to extend the Webpack config specifically, so we add the Webpack function to the exported object. This function will be given the existing Webpack config as an argument, and we want to push another rule to it. We want to test for SVG files, so let's write our index for .svg, and the dollar means we will cut every file ending with a dot. SVG. And we want to use the SVGR Webpack plugin we just installed. Great! Changing this file, the next config.js, is one of the things that need a server restart. So let's do that. And let's see if we can finally use our logo as a React component. It works! Yay! Let's see if we can resize to taste by using a Tailwind CSS class to specify its width. Ah. <laughs> So the problem now is that our SVG has its width and height specified. Since it also specifies the viewbox property, we don't need width and height. We may remove them and then size to taste. But the whole point of our loader is to stop doing things manually, so we could instead pass an option to SVGR that will automatically replace width and height with one EM. That unit will make our SVGs use font size for their size. To enable that option, we go back to our config, to our rule. We now want use to be an array. The loader is going to be what we had before, but we now want to pass options, the icon option specifically. And now, after our server restart, our logo will be sized like the text around it. And we can modify its size using the text dash tailwind CSS utility classes. Cool. All right, we've got our logo in, we're happy, but not delighted because we ain't really getting TypeScript support. If I hover over the logo component, I still think it's any from the Next.js definition we saw earlier. We can do better. Let's copy this, create a new file in our source directory, custom.t.ts. can be anywhere and be named anything so long as it ends on .ts, but this is quite common. Let's paste and make the definition a bit better. We're going to be exporting a component. And let's bring in React to use some interfaces from there. So it's a React function component. It takes the SVG props React supports for SVG, SVG element. And no, I didn't know this by heart. My ID autocomplete is totally carrying here. 
So this should work, and yet I am still getting the generic any definition from next image types. I don't really know why I am losing this declaration war, but I know that my convention will be to keep all SVG components in my components slash SVGs directory. So if I'm explicit in my declaration like this, then my ID gets it. Great. This feels like a hack and quite flimsy, but hey, it's working for us. So good enough for now. We get autocomplete for properties we can legit use and squigglies for properties I just made up. So, you know, great. That's all I want. We've got our logo in, our client is over the moon and now wants to stop spelling out those socials. Aerie wants to use icons in their place. Should be the same as importing the logo, but design wants these to be one set of gray in the header and a different set of gray in the footer. No worries, we don't need multiple copies of each icon. All we need is to ensure we're using current color. Let's go over it. So same as before, personally, I download these straight from Figma and then put them in my source components SVGs directory. Cool, let's import them in our hero component. Let's specify that our array of navigation items, those items now also have an icon property, which will be our new imports, our new React components. Let's go to where we're using this array. Let's switch to the structure in our props. And now let's render our icon instead of spelling out the name. All right, almost. Looks like we need to declare these as inline blocks. Great, works. TypeScript is upset because I guess we need to use that explicit railroad length type. No worries. Everyone's happy. The footer will be simpler. Let's copy and paste our imports, use them in the links. Sweet. All right, now we have the coloring problem. Let me switch these to use our primary color to make it more obvious that it's not respected. So this would be our cyan, but it's still gray. What do we do? Well, easiest would be to open the SVGs. Let's open our Instagram SVG and switch out any color we want to be dynamic to be current color. So making this fill current color, great. Instagram icon is now cyan, becomes darker on hover too. Let's do the same for the LinkedIn icon. Sweet. Finally, let's add ARIA labels to our links. For accessibility, since they don't have text anymore, this is something that our test suite would have got with the testing library. And that's the note we're ending on today. Would you like to see more on setting up tests on using testing library? Let me know in the comments. Our playlist for building an app with Next.js is growing stronger. Consider going through it. Let me know what you'd like to see next. And most of all, thanks a bunch for watching. I'll See you around.